In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're here for the funeral mass of Paulina Murphy. All the family and uh, Patricia who took care of her, her daughter and her other daughter came up from Georgia. And uh, good Paulina, known as Grandma to me, um, we're happy to come and bring the Mass for her soul. I came up with the seminarians from Boston, Kentucky, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, where uh, we have a handful of seminarians training to be Catholic priests, Catholic priests of the sacred Catholic tradition of the Church. Not the new Mass, not the new inventions since 1960s, but the Mass canonized and said by all the saints. St. John Vianney said this Mass. St. John Bosco said this Mass. St. Isaac Job said this Mass. And uh, Pope St. Pius V said, every priest has the right to say this Mass till, he, till the end of the world. And let no pope or bishop or priest ever change this Mass. And they've done that in the 1960s. They turned the Mass to face the people, turn it into a Catholic, mass into a protestantized service and that's why the seminary exists and that's why you have this mass because grandma loved this mass she fought for this true faith that christ gave to the world and she died in the embrace of the virgin mary and the angels and of her daughter patricia so we're happy to come and bring this holy mass and Father Pfeiffer, uh, the bearded one, he just flew in from Australia just yesterday. He was out doing apostolate in Australia. So he just flew in. He spent the whole night in the airport, as often happens, and drove down this morning. And uh, so the priests from Kentucky, we fly out covering many missions, along with a handful of other Catholic priests throughout the world who are working to reform the Catholic Church from within to restore the Catholic Church. And Christ promised the gates of hell will never prevail against the Catholic Church that he founded. So the enemies, the, the devils, the enemies of Christ, heretics will attack the church from outside, traitors from within, as happened in the 1960s who tried to destroy the church from within. But our Lord, his church lasts until the end of the world. And this is why we bring this Holy Mass, because this, this is the faith that Christ gave to the whole world to save souls from hell. And this is the great faith that good Paulina, Grandma kept. Now we know that the central act of all history is the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Everything was created for this after the fall of Adam and Eve. Everything is centered on this great act of love of God, that he would die on the cross, giving his whole life and all the tortures. And this is Holy Week, so on Good Friday, on the first Good Friday, our Lord was betrayed by one of his own Catholic bishops. He was denied by one of his first Pope, St. Peter. Our Lord was arrested like an animal, beaten like an animal, condemned like a criminal who was innocent, who had no sin. But he, he was God, and he told the Jews, I and the Father are one. And if you don't believe my words, then believe my works. Who else rose people from the dead by his own words? Who else cured the sick and the blind? Who else did so many miracles that everyone, all the cities witnessed this? And the St. John says it would take volumes to fill the whole earth if we were to tell every story of the miracles that Christ did. So Christ said it, put it very plainly, if you don't believe my words, believe my works. But the Jews rejected him. And our sins and those, all the sins of the human race nailed the true God to the tree of the cross. 
<coughs> but it was firstly the will of the Father. And our, our Lord embraced the sufferings of the cross out of obedience to the Father because heaven was shut since the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve. When they fell, the whole human race was shut from the kingdom of heaven. So the only thing that could open again the gates of heaven and wash away sin from our souls, because all of us are born in original sin from Adam and Eve, from the fall of our first father, Adam. But the second Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ, would wash away that, that blackness of our souls that we're born with. And that comes on our souls when we break God's commandments, when we offend Him, when we sin against God. And any serious offense against the Ten Commandments, a big offense, it brings death to the soul. This is what's called mortal sin. A mortal wound kills the body. Mortal sin kills the soul. And a soul separated from God knows the anguish. It has no peace. It has no consolation in it. It always bears in it the reproach of a guilty conscience. And this all of us have. Because God gave us a conscience to know when we do what is right and good before God, your soul's at peace. When we offend God, we don't do His will, we break His commandments and live in sin. You know it. You know it. A child uh, who, who uh, disobeys and breaks into the cookies or the candies without permission, and he gets caught, why does he try to squirm out of it? Well, his conscience rebukes him. He knows he did wrong, and that's a little thing. What about a big thing? So this sin separates us from God. And mortal sin brings death to the soul. And this is why our Lord knew we are poor sinners. He knew we are poor, weak human beings. And that we are prone to sin. And he knows we are under attack constantly by the attacks of the devils. Because the devils, the damned angels in hell who fell, they want all of us, if possible, damned to burn in hell with them forever. They hate us. They hate the human race. And they, they are so jealous because all of, you, all of us can gain the happiness that the fallen angels lost. So Lucifer, now Satan, always roams the earth with all the millions and millions of devils to attack. But the devils cannot do anything unless God permits. And then we have the whole spirit of the world the whole spirit of the world, which is so opposed to our Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of selfishness, the spirit of man's convenience, divorce when he wants, marries when he wants, stop children, now aborts them. We live in an age that massacres our own children in their mother's wombs, and this is now pro protected by the law, and this so much offends God. And the laws of allowing divorce, and the laws allowing uh, sodomitism, which offends God very much. And the laws that are passed of uh, now permitting uh, assisted suicide, etc., etc. All these laws that offend God so much. And the whole human race has become like a giant Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was destroyed by fire. Sin is no joke. And souls who die unrepentant of sin, what can our Lord do? They burn in hell forever. Forever. And that's why it's so important for all of us, myself included, we must obey our Lord Jesus Christ. We must obey God, who, who revealed to us through the prophets that he would send his son and his son did become man. This is historic fact. It's as real as this wood. It's as real as death that God became man. And he really was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem. The angels did sing for him. The shepherds adored him. And then Herod tried to attack him and Christ had to flee to Egypt. 
the St. Joseph and the Virgin Mary, a trip of up to 600 miles on foot. And then our Lord grew up in the hidden light of Nazareth with the Virgin Mary, with St. Joseph, preparing for that great hour of his death on the cross. And when that hour did finally come on Holy Thursday and Good Friday, he said, now my hour has come. Father, now the hour has come. Glorify thy son. And our Lord Jesus Christ endured the great sufferings, sufferings that we'll never ever comprehend. But we get a little glimpse of it by the physical sufferings. And this is something that Paulina, uh, Grandma held very dear. She always contemplated the sufferings of our Lord, and she suffered very much. She suffered much. I first met Grandma when I was assigned as my mission flying in from St. Louis, Missouri back in 90, 90, 1995 to 1999. <clears throat> For four years I had this mission in Philadelphia area. So Grandma came to Mass with Patricia they are devout Catholics and they, we all have to work to save our soul. And she came to Mass in St. Jude's. So one of the first times I met Grandma, I called her Grandma because she was like a Grandma, was one of the first times was to bring her communion when she was very sick. And then the other time was to give her extreme unction, which is the last sacrament when there's a danger of death. Often, many times, it cures people. Every priest witnesses this. You give the extreme unction, and the next day they're up and shopping. No problem. God gives them another chance. So Grandma had extreme unction probably up to 15, maybe 20 times. Not just by me, but by other priests. So from the day I met her until her death, her health was always up and down. She often was in danger of death because of her heart congestion, her continual, if she didn't have eye problems, she had ankle problems. If she didn't have ankle problems, she had kidney or lung problems. She always suffered. And <clears throat> she did what our Lord asked her, would have asked all of us to do. When you suffer, it humbles us, puts us before God and realize how short this life is and that we're only on this earth to get to heaven and to escape the fires of hell. We are not just another species on this earth inhabiting the planet. Those are lies of evolution and lies of the, of the spirit of the world. But, but that's a fact and we know it. It's in our conscience. We know when we do good, we know when we do bad. And we know we're made for a happiness that God has prepared us that only he can fill. Nothing on this earth can make you happy. Nothing. All the riches, all the wealth, all the possessions, all the pleasures, they are vain and, and get depressed. Why do they commit suicide? Because their heart's not full. Our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in thee, said St. Augustine. And wouldn't he know? He ran from God for 30 years. And it was his mother, St. Monica, who prayed continually. And St. Ambrose told St. Monica, the mother of so many tears, for her son will not go unheard by God. And St. Augustine converted at age 30. He was baptized Catholic at age 30. He professed the Holy Roman Catholic faith, and he became one of the greatest bishops of the Holy Catholic Church. We read his writings all the time. And that's the power of prayer. St. Teresa of Lisieux, she was a girl in the 1800s. At nine years old, she already knew she was meant to be a Carmelite nun. She read in the newspaper, she heard her father speaking that there was a criminal condemned to death. Pranzini was his name. And he was climbing the scaffold to be executed, hanged. A priest nearby <clears throat> stood by him. St. Teresa when she heard about this the week before, she begged our Lord, please convert this man before he dies, that he dies repentant and sorry for offending thee, and dies in the Holy Catholic faith. So she found out later in the newspaper, it, it described what happened. 
that the priest was there and Franzini, the hardened criminal and murderer, knelt down and made his confession, kissed the crucifix, and he was executed. She saved his soul by prayer. And this is how I met, how I met Grandma, because she became the grandma of many, many souls. Because I would always ask her from the day I met her, would you please pray for so-and-so? Would you please pray for this camp that's coming up? Would you please pray for this pilgrimage? Would you please pray for this person who's dying? And Grandma always offered up her suffering. And it wasn't always easy. And many times her and Patricia suffered very much. They suffered very, very, very much in many, many different ways. But Grandma always suffered certainly physically a lot. And I know it. Patricia knows it, who took care of her all the time. And in her older age, it was Patricia picking up her up when she fell. It was Patricia helping her use the bathroom, helping her walk and feed her with not much. So, Grandma, this shows us the power of the love of Christ crucified. Why? Because St. Monica won her son from hell. St. Teresa, as a girl and as a nun, snatched many, many souls from hell by prayer and suffering for them. And our Lord shows us on the cross the price tag for each soul. Each one of your souls is bought by the most expensive price. Nothing on, the, on this whole earth, all the gold and all the fancy cars and all this, the shiny seas and beaches and big boats, Nothing can pay the price of one soul. And Christ paid that price, which had to be the blood of God, the infinite God from all eternity, who was all love but also just. And God took on flesh, and his blood is the price of your soul. But he doesn't handcuff any of us. None of us are obliged to keep his commandments. None of us are obliged to love God above all things. He gives us this scary thing called free will. And unfortunately, the mass of mankind drive their free will into the, off the cliff, into hell. Wide is the road to hell, most travel thereon. Narrow is the path to heaven. Few there are that find it, because few there are that even care to find it. Because we're so drowned in selfishness and our pleasures, we forget the love of God. That's why we need to turn our minds, especially on Good Friday and this week, to see how much Christ suffered for the love of your soul. And he told St. Teresa of Avila, I would go through the whole passion and death on the cross just for your soul again. And he would say that for each one of your souls, he would say it to Grandma. And Grandma understood because when you suffer, things take a different dimension, don't they? And some, when, you, when you suffer, you feel helpless. When you suffer, you just have to endure pain with patience. But most, most suffering is wasted, as Archbishop Sheen said. But those who offer it out of love for God, that suffering is powerful. And that's why this is, again, how I met Grandma. She, and this is why her mission in her last years was to pray for all of her family, all of you. And she often named to me some of you that she loved very much and prayed for all the time. And all her children and grandchildren and her relatives and her sister and her daughter and her other daughters and her sons. She offered all her suffering for this, and uh, Grandma, that was kind of her vocation in her last years, was just to suffer out of love for God, and that's a great vocation, because our Lord has chosen many souls down the centuries, chosen souls just to suffer, to help him save them from hell, and save many other souls from hell, and that's the ball game. That is the real picture, folks. You and I are going to be here, like Grandma, someday in this box. But our, our, we're going to leave behind our families. We're going to leave behind all our wealth. We're going to leave behind everything. All that will matter is when we come before God, did you love me above all things? 
Did you keep my commandments? And did you love your neighbor for the love of God? That's all that's going to, the wealth is going to be there. And how did you do your duties of state? And that goes for us priests and the seminarians who are training to be priests. We will all be judged. And we will have to render an account for all our works. So let's learn from Grandma, who's kind of a grandma all to all of us here. Learn from her the value of suffering and the value of uniting our sufferings with Christ crucified. As all of us suffer, all of us have thorns of this life, all of us have tears in this life, and death is a painful one for everyone especially for those who, who are close and family. But Christ even makes death sweet. He even sprinkles sugar on it because he, through him, every suffering is turned to, to gold. Every suffering goes to save souls from hell. And that's the love God has for souls. And he wants to save all souls. But again, God wishes not the death of a sinner, but that he convert to him and live. Live in the state of grace on earth and live in the glory of heaven forever. The happiness of which we cannot even imagine, says St. Paul. Eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor can any of us, no man, possibly imagine what God, what happiness he has prepared for those who love him. So, Grandma, where is she? Where is her soul? We don't know. God knows. I, I have no doubt she saved her soul. She was so well prepared. She always was prepared. She always was praying the rosary every day. She, she, whenever she had mass and confession, she would gladly go. But it is the normal thing that most souls have to pass through purgatory. Purgatory is created out of God's great love and mercy. Why? Simple thing. Only what is most pure and undefiled can come before the throne of God. Because God is holiness himself, beauty himself, joy himself. So nothing stained can come before him. So if, if all the human race at their death are perfectly spotless and without sin, they go straight to heaven. And there's only a few saints that did that. We know St. Scholastica went straight to heaven. St. Benedict went straight to heaven. St. Martin of Tours was seen walking up a long staircase surrounded by angels into heaven. Those are rare. But mo many saints have had to pass even through purgatory. St. Severin, a bishop in Germany, when he died, he had to spend six months in purgatory for being careless with the breviary. Priests are bound to pray every day. Many priests have been, had to be in purgatory for a long time for carelessness at Mass. Or uh, even holy nuns have had to pass through purgatory. In purgatory they suffer, but they're at peace and they are happy because they're going home. But they cannot help themselves. And this is why the church pours out prayers for those who die. This is why we put on the black vestments to mourn and pray for those souls. And many times in the, in the lives of many holy people and saints, for example, a, a Sister Teresa Gesta in a, in a convent in Italy, she died. Two weeks later, the nuns thought, well, she was so holy and a good example, she must be in heaven. And she appeared and she said, why do you, why do you forget me? I'm in purgatory. She put her hand on the book that the, the nun was praying out of, which was the Imitation of Christ, written by uh, Thomas Kempis. She put her hand on the book and vanished, asking for prayers. She was so burning hot, her fingerprints imprinted deep, like two inches into the pages. And you can see these things in Rome, where they keep the museum of purgatory. And so all the nuns began to double their prayers for her, and after a few days she appeared to the same sister, happy and full of glory, and to thank her that through her prayers she was being sent earlier to heaven. This is why we need to pray for the souls in purgatory. They need our help. 
And we all love each other, and when you see someone suffering, you want to help them. So I don't know if Grandma's in purgatory. I don't know. But if she is, we need to help her. If she's in heaven, those prayers won't be wasted. They'll go to all the family and souls that need them. So let's pray for Grandma in this Mass, all of you. And very soon, very soon, when you hear the bells ring and the incense, incense, and the bells adoring Christ on the altar, because when the priest elevates the host and the chalice saying the words of consecration, it's not just some empty ceremony. What really happens is that the crucifixion of Christ on the cross is made present on the altar. This is why it's called a sacrifice. This is why the devil hates this mass so much, because it's the real thing. He hates Jesus crucified. Because Jesus crucified is the greatest act of love of God and the love of neighbor. Because he died for the love of us to save us from hell. So that's the Mass. And that's what takes place very soon right here on this altar. And I'm going to do at this Mass what St. John Vianney did. Of course, he was a saint. But St. John Vianney, when he offered the Mass for souls at their funeral, he would say to our Lord, Lord, I give you the heart of your son that I elevate on in the sacred host. I give you his heart, the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist and his precious blood in the chalice. I give you his heart, his whole body, his soul, divinity in exchange that you would release this soul from purgatory if that soul is there. So St. John Vianney was a saint. God heard his prayer. I'm a poor sinner, but maybe he'll hear Father Pfeiffer on behalf of me or among you or your prayers. But we let's pray if she is in purgatory, let's ask God to have mercy on her and shorten her time. So let's begin now the real action. This is what this is what the souls in purgatory really love is the mass being offered for them. Because it's the very blood of Christ Himself and it refreshes their souls and often releases them to the eternal happiness of heaven. Which joy I wish you all. And don't leave and don't forget, Grandma. Don't be one of those who a month later shrug their <coughs> shoulders and say, oh, that was a nice ceremony and nice burial. And learn from it. That goes for me, too. we got to learn. we got to be ready to die and offer our sufferings, grow in the love of God, keep his commandments, embrace the holy Roman Catholic faith of all time, not the Vatican II nonsense, the real Catholic faith of all time. And strive and fight for heaven, because Christ really died for each one of you. And when you come before him, and me too at our judgment, he's going to show us the price tag of your soul. We're going to see his wounds. We're going to see the wound of his side. And he said, I died for you. Did you live for me? Did you keep my commandments? Did you love me, your true God who created you above all things? with the Father and the Holy Ghost. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, is to love God above all, save the soul, and glorify Him. So let's begin, let's go through now with this Holy Mass, and uh, pray in this Mass for, for a good grandma. And I might appeal to your, uh, your, uh, your compassion as well. You who are family, take care of your your sweet sister and your family member, Patricia. Good Patricia took care of Grandma all these many years. And basically her whole life was taking care of Grandma, who was always kind of in the danger of dying. So Patricia needs your compassion, your help, your, your love, and your, your strength. Because right now, everything has been just collapsed. But her faith is strong. So, but support her as a family member, and let's support Grandma, of course, with all our prayers in this Holy Mass. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin. In the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.